The Sapphire Pro from Two Trees is a Core XY 3D printer with linear rails for X and Y that you can currently get for around $320 delivered. I tested this machine and in this video we'll find out how good or bad it performs at this price tag. Let's find out more. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. A couple of months ago, Two Trees, a Shenzhen 3D printer manufacturer reached out to me and asked if I want to try out their new flagship 3D printer. I usually do not tend to do a lot of 3D printer reviews, but this machine stood out due to a couple of reasons. A Core XY is nothing new, but other similarly priced competitors like the Ender 5 use the commonly known rollers for the axis, whereas the Sapphire Pro uses linear rails which should give the axis more rigidity. This allows faster print moves at higher quality and since I usually want to have my prints fast, this was totally what I was looking for. It also advertised silent stepper drivers for the X and Y axis, which is always a bonus. Extruder and Z axis unfortunately only use the good old Allegro A4988 drivers, probably to save cost. They are mounted on a MakerBase Robin Nano 32 bit board and the whole system runs on 24 volts. The build area is advertised as 235mm in all dimensions, but as it turns out, only around 220mm are usable due to clearances. Together with a sturdy frame, a BMG style knockoff extruder and a 3.5 inch color touchscreen, this machine seemed to be a very competitive combo for around $320, with stock also available in the EU and US to avoid trouble and costs with custom. So I decided to give it a try. If you have experience with this printer, then please leave a comment down below and tell us what you think about it, because my experience may differ since I got one of the earlier machines. Assembly was actually planned on a livestream, but that didn't work out, fortunately. Fortunately, because this was quite a frustrating process for me. It first started with a real bare bones manual that I just was able to follow, but especially the wiring is nothing for a newbie. There is an assembly video around, but that also doesn't help that much more. The printer comes as a kit and requires roughly 1 to 2 hours to put together if everything goes well. This includes assembly of the top plate with the linear rails and the belt system that unfortunately lacks a proper tightening mechanism. Here I unfortunately already hit two dead ends. At first I noticed that the linear rails were loose and it turned out that on further inspection the screws were just too long. They delivered M3 by 8mm screws that bottomed out whereas M3 by 6mm would have been necessary. Since I couldn't get such screws on short notice, I used my handy crimping tool, which is probably more designed for softer screws, to cut the bolts to length, so I could continue with the assembly process. The next problem directly occurred when I wanted to screw everything down because the top plate was all bent and dented. Tightening everything down this way just resulted in the carriages binding up, so I tried my best and used vice clamps to bend everything back straight. This is something that should not happen and didn't come from shipping, because there everything was really well packed. So two trees, I hope you sort out this kind of quality control problems. Also things like a way too long Bowden tube just complicate things for beginners. When fastening the linear rails, make sure that they are parallel because otherwise your carriages will not run smoothly. So I finished that, at which point I noticed that the upper mounts for the C-axis were missing as well. Designed my own, printed them out and a couple of hours later I was able to continue with the build. The rest of the build went smooth besides figuring out where plugs needed to go on the main board. I usually despise these corrugated plastic hoses because they make your fingertips bleed when inserting the wires. This time though, I printed myself a nice handy tool that made the insertion process quite easy and honestly, in the end, the printer did look very clean. One thing that did bother me was that there was no strain relief for the heat bed, which is kind of dangerous 
and I do have to print me something as soon as possible. Alright, we have come that far, so how does it print? Well, not at all in the beginning. The reason for that is that the PID control values for the used 50 watt heater cartridge were so off that the printer overshot the desired temperature by 40 degrees or more in the beginning and was not able to reach an equilibrium so that the machine never started printing. At first I seriously waited more than 30 minutes, nothing happened, only the temperatures oscillated. A connoisseur of 3D printers and a couple of decode commands would now advise to do auto PID tuning with M303. Well, that didn't work because Marlin spits out an over temperature warning due to the severe overshoots. I managed to reduce the first overshoot in the process with blowing air on the heater block so that the process was able to finish. After that the temperatures were still not perfectly stable, but at least printing started at that point until the machine lost steps on the X and Y axis. Great! Well, turned out that the reference voltage for the TMC 2208s were set way too high to around 2 volts instead of a reasonable 0.9 volts. Changed that and I was finally able to start printing. I hope this is sorted out for the current machines, but you never know. In order to make this review as realistic as possible and not mod the whole thing spending again as much as the printer costs in the first place, I tried to test it as out of the box as possible. The only thing that I did besides reference voltage and PID values were that I printed two new fan shrouds from PETG because the part cooling fans are horribly underpowered in the first place and the stock shrouds spread the air too widely. Then there is the homing switch that just touches the housing of the bearing and makes it really unreliable. Here I also printed a small clamp so that I get an even surface for the switch. Last but not least I added the new PID values in the firmware configuration file and also adjusted the stock print area and maximum speeds, accelerations and jerk because they were more than conservative and slowed everything down. I linked the firmware files down below for everyone who wants to install them as well. The topic firmware is also a bit controversial, because 2Trees only provides the pre-compiled binary with a configuration file. Makerbase does provide a version of Marlin for their Robin Nano, but considering the date probably not the latest release. So if you want to currently mod the firmware for your Sapphire Pro, you need some tinkering, but I linked a very useful guide down below. If you by the way enjoy reviews like this, then don't forget to subscribe and remember to click the notification bell to not miss any upcoming videos. Now, when it prints, it kind of does that very nicely. Look at those parts. I made myself a profile in Prusa Slicer that you can also download from my website that I linked below. Due to the rigidity of the linear rails, you can go quite fast and accelerations also don't need to be horribly low. To dampen the rattling frame, I usually have my printers on a slab of concrete with some foam below it. You can't imagine how much that isolates noise and vibrations. The parts show almost no ringing marks on the surface, which is pretty nice. You should only tighten the screw on the extruder slightly, because otherwise it squeezes the material to the side and together, but after some proper setup, I have to say that it does work quite well. The retraction torture test with the chainmail did work perfectly. Didn't have a gem or something like that so far. 
The only thing is that the extruder is noisy due to the Allegro drivers that it uses. Also, the spool holder on the side does its job well, even though I thought it was too small in the beginning. Unfortunately, even with the new fan shrouds, the printer has a cooling issue. What can especially be seen in overhanging areas. This is definitely something I need to work on in the future if I want to print fast. Also, now to the elephant in the room, that you might have already noticed on the previous shots. The printer unfortunately suffers from visible C-bending or wobbles. I checked the lead screw if it was straight and it was. I replaced the coupler for a test, didn't change anything. I even printed a new lead screw nut out of IGO's polymer bearing material, which also didn't change anything. So this is kind of unfortunate and might require major upgrades either with the bearing and linear rods or a stepper motor that has an integrated lead screw. The thing is that a slight wobble is visible, especially on flat surfaces. Still, on most parts you have to look for it to notice it. So even though this is not pretty, I still think this might be okay for many, because other than that, I really can't complain about the printing quality. If anything, it is really great. The fake tech print surface holds the parts very well, actually even too much, up to the point that you sometimes break them while removing. This does allow it though that you can print PLA at 30 degrees celsius on it and save energy that way. I'd probably ditch the print surface and use glass or some aftermarket flexible print plate system on it. In terms of noise level it could be way better than it currently is because the printing noise itself is very low due to the TMC drivers besides the extruder. The thing that makes it quite unpleasant is the fan of the power supply, that is clearly hearable even at minimal load and also the 30mm hot end fan is not the most pleasant. It's not that bad and still better than a CR10 for example. Still, it bothers me a little when I'm working next to it and eliminates a bit the advantage of the stepper drivers. So let's get to the verdict. In my opinion, the Two Trees Sapphire Pro is a project and not a tool. What I mean with that is, if you're looking for a new printer that just works right out of the box, I think it's not the right machine for you. If it is your first printer, seriously think twice if you are really into debugging. Though, if you are looking for a project to work on and tinker with that machine, then the $320 that you can currently get it for is not wasted. The Sapphire Pro delivers a nice frame, especially with the linear rails and requires some upgrades to make it really work well. I want to mod this one that it can print really fast, but you can also get acrylic panels for the Sapphire Pro and with a proper hot end this might become a machine for some really technical material printing. You can always argue that you can get something better for cheaper, but I think this package has quite some potential, even though it's not perfect. But what do you think? Leave your ideas and maybe even experience with this printer down in the comments to help out everyone else. Full disclosure, this printer was sent to me for free as a review unit. No money has exchanged hands and all opinions are my own. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this review, then please leave a like and share this video with your friends. If you are new to the channel, then consider subscribing to not miss any upcoming videos. You can support my work via Patreon or finally also become a YouTube member. For more 3D printing related content, check out the rest of my videos and my website. Thanks for watching, auf Wiedersehen and goodbye.